Okay, I've gotten many questions over the years asking me who the real remnant people are, but nowhere near as many as in the last few weeks for some reason. And this question is why I did a study. As a matter of fact, uh, if you go to the website, go to Milky Truth in the Bible Truth section and go down to uh, Remnant Christian Fruits, you'll see I did a study on this um, years ago and posted it here so as to have an easy way to answer the emails that came in. I just send people to this page on the website. But lately, due to the long prophesied work of the Seventh-day Remnant people and the fact we are now known globally, especially in regards to our obedience to the Lord and all aspects of gospel order, including what some Christians find difficult to do, like you know, like rebuking evil, as Ephesians 5.11 declares is our duty, or, or exposing the man of sin so as to alert the people in danger, or teaching historic as well as current events as they you know pertain to prophetic statements of our Lord so as to help the faithful realize what time it is. And even the fact that we boldly refuse to yoke with the non-believer for the sake of the Pope's prophesied ecumenical charge that we see happening right now. But yet another distinguishing feature of the Seventh-day Remnant people is that we even refuse to join our churches and ministries with the government so as to create an image of the beast, as we have seen the SDA church, as well as all the other churches of the world, are already doing. And if you want some more information about that, go to the Prophecy section of the website, go down to Prophecy of Today, scroll down to the 501c3, or Image of the Beast, and you'll see what I mean there. But with all these obvious fruits set aside, is it even physically, spiritually, or even historically possible for the Seventh-day Adventist Church of today to be the remnant church that prophecy speaks of, as some of the leaders in the SDA church are currently claiming. Well, let's see what the Bible has to say about that. Now, there are many areas in the Word of God that speak of the remnant people and their fruits, and I have many of them listed, as I stated a moment ago here on this page on the website. Sadly, as many SDAs will admit, their church leaders do not display these biblical fruits completely. In fact, all that have left, and most that for some reason still stay in the SDA church still admit, their leaders now display the fruits of Babylon in the SDA church. And no, I'm not calling the SDA church the whore of Babylon. I have a page on the website all about the real whore of Babylon right there. Okay? The Seventh-day Adventist church, like all the other churches, are the sisters of this whore. But to keep the video short and to the point that will make it very easy to illustrate with those you fear are trapped in the apostate SDA church, I'm just going to touch on two of the many areas in the Word of God that speak of the remnant people in the historic sense that even the most crafty Bible twister can't get around. They're found in the book of Matthew as well as the book of Revelation. Okay, in Matthew chapter 20, verses 1 to 7, we see the historic movements of the church listed in a parable spoken by the Lord himself, wherein he said this, he said, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is in a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour, and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right I will give you. And they went their way. Again he went about the sixth and the ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out, and found others standing idle, and saith unto them, Why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Now, there are many prophetic statements made in this parable, but for the sake of time, I'm only going to outline the obvious and the more historic ones. Early in the morning is, of course, the Jewish nation that was supposed to go out with the truth and share it to all the world. They, of course, failed, and then you have the third hour Christians. They go forth and they spread the message, and then they get all messed up with Catholicism and all that, and so you have the sixth hour where the Protestant Reformation, or Martin Luther's movement, came forth. And then they got all intertwined with Catholicism, of course, and got all messed up. And so then you have the ninth hour, which is the Seventh-day Adventists. And then, as is obvious today, which you can see 
in great detail on this website, sdeapostasy.org, that the Seventh-day Adventist church got all messed up with Catholicism as well. And so you have the 11th hour that speaks of the Seventh-day remnant people, or the remnant of Reseda, as the prophecy calls her. So if there was only this one passage in Scripture to define the historic churches, we would have all we need to proclaim that the SDA pastors and the preachers are calling Jesus Christ a liar when they say the SDA church is the remnant church. In other words, how can the SDA church, who was slated to be the church that did her work in the ninth hour, somehow deny the laws of time and space to somehow become the same church that does the work in the 11th hour. I mean, did not Christ illustrate in that parable, it was two different workers that were called to the task at different hours of the day. You have the ninth and the 11th hour. I mean, in short, it's historically impossible for the Seventh-day Adventist church to be the remnant church. But because many SDAs stopped studying prophecy, which is the end result of Vatican prelates infiltrating the church decades ago, as they admitted was their task in their Jesuit oath, the SDA people didn't catch how their pastors were lying to them. Plus, we also need to realize how a passage like this can still be manipulated to some extent as long as the pastor or the preacher knows his flock is not in their Bibles as they should be. But the following passage I'm about to share makes it 100% impossible for the SDA pastors to twist. It's found in Revelation 12, 17, where it says, And the dragon was wroth with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, here the SDA pastors don't have the option to declare the convenience of prophetic time to twist a parable out of context to make it seem okay to assume that the ninth hour church somehow melded into the 11th hour church. Here in Revelation 12, 17, we see that both churches are mentioned at the exact same time and place in history. You have the woman, which is angering the dragon, and then you have the remnant of her seed that he's making war with. So every honest SDA pastor will agree that the woman spoken here in Revelation 12, 17 is in fact the SDA church. And strangely enough, they will also admit that the remnant of her seed is a group that comes out of her number in the last days. What they won't admit is the remnant of her seed came out to follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth, as Revelation 14, 4 predicted, because the SDA church kicked Jesus out of the church and therefore no longer stood as the target of Satan. And this is why he's not making war with them. He's just angry with them. So, I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, he's angry at her. And the reason he's angry is because she caused him much pain in the ninth hour. That much is obvious by all the facts that are laid out since the SDA church started, wherein they were publishing tens of thousands of documents exposing that man of sin in Rome. But it's the remnant of her seed that he is now making war with because, as the parable in Matthew chapter 20 confirms, they're the ones doing the work in the 11th hour. So I ask, how is it possible for the SDA church to be the remnant of her seed? Better yet, the scripture says in Revelation 12, 17, that the remnant comes from her, the woman. So I must also ask, how is it possible for the SDA church to be the remnant of her own seed? Not only is that physically and historically impossible, it's spiritually impossible as well, because Jesus also said in Matthew 7, 20, that it is by their fruits ye shall know them. Now, just to name a few out of literally hundreds of evil acts of the Seventh-day Adventist leaders in just the last few decades alone, the SDA church is now openly embracing Allah as God. They declare the Koran is as sacred as the Bible, on camera, no less. They built an Adventist Vatican in Maryland. They sanction and declare homosexual marriage is acceptable on camera via Loma Linda, no less. They ordain women as conference presidents. They promote the popes of Rome on the covers of their magazines. They allow Roman Catholic priests to preach in their churches. They declare the pope is no longer antichrist. Their conference president even declares the three angels message worthy of the historical trash heap they have their students bow to allah in muslim mosques and display that blasphemous act with pride in photographs placed in andrews university's focus magazine back in 2009 their conference president declares abortion is acceptable to control population they sue their own brethren in court and even send them to jail for simply using the sda name they do business with monsanto who is poisoning everyone on the planet they embrace easter sunday services and they even have scores of churches keeping sunday holy all around the world 
Again, this is only a few of the hundreds of decadent fruits listed at sdaapostasy.org. Still, and yes, as the prophecy stated, the dragon is angry with this church. But using common sense, one can see he is angry only because of the damage she inflicted upon his agenda in the ninth hour. But it is also very apparent it is the remnant of her seed that have left the SDA church to follow Christ after being disfellowshipped in droves for their faith. That is the focus of Satan's warfare right now. So, the next time you hear an SDA pastor or an SDA preacher declaring that the church that they stand in is the remnant church, ask him, or her for that matter, why they are calling Jesus Christ a liar. I hope and pray you were blessed. Please share this with as many as possible. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching. God bless.